welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We have finally completed our Pac-12 football predictions for this upcoming 2023 season, and our projected Pac-12 standings might surprise you a little bit. We've been saying it all year long. The Pac-12 is going to be one of the best conferences in the country, one of the most entertaining, one of the most competitive in the country this year. Guys like USC, Washington, Utah, Oregon all have Heisman Trophy contenders at quarterback and very well could win the conference this year. Teams like Oregon State and UCLA are certainly no slouch either, while teams like Colorado, maybe even a team like Arizona, might surprise, at least it's getting a little bit of hype in the preseason. It's going to be a wild year in the conference, guys. And today, we are here to recap everything we predicted over the last week or so, share our projected standings, and then get you ready as we move on to our next conference. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below. Our expert picks are over there on the gridironexpert.com. Sign up for those today, guys. It's a full year-long subscription for some of the best college football NFL spread picks in the country. We can guarantee a winning season. We can guarantee we'll beat out over 80% of the national handicappers because we've done so each of the last five years. And we can guarantee you'll have money right back in your pocket at the end of this season. You will come out ahead. Check out our Patreon account as well for exclusive college football content there year round. And of course, check out our mailing address. Send us some gear to be represented in every single Gridiron Expert video. We'd love some more West Coast representation, more Pac-12 representation as we get into this season. But of course, we're just looking to expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. So take advantage of that. We'll give you a shout out. We'll put it on display and we'll be ready to go once the season kicks off. So let's take a look at the Pac-12. We'll pull up our graphic here and let's go. Yeah, it's a shock, right? Our Pac-12 championship game is USC versus Washington. We'll tell you who we think is going to win the conference at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. But you look, I mean, it's Kind of, uh, I feel like relatively straightforward. USC 11 and 1, 8 and 1. Obviously, if you want to find out who we have USC losing to, go check out our official USC prediction video. We're going to do that for every single team here. We have our game by game uh, predictions for every single team. But USC at 11 and 1, only one conference loss. We, that does, it does mean we think they go on the road and take down Notre Dame in October. But the Trojans simply are going to be too good. Caleb Williams, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, is back. The majority of his pass catches are back. The defense might still be pretty bad, but it's going to be better than it was last year. Very favorable first half of the schedule. The Trojans were one win away from the playoff last year, and we think that very well could be the case again this year. We mentioned those other teams, though. Washington, Utah, Oregon. Look at that. That's where it becomes a jumbled mess. And that's where you have to go into some tie-breaking scenarios. Because we have the Huskies, the Utes, and the Ducks all coming in at 10-2 and two and 7-2 and two in conference play. So a three-way tie for second, which means a three-way tie for who gets to play USC in the Pac-12 championship game. And let's also keep in mind that if USC were maybe to lose one more conference game, depending on who it was to, there's an opportunity you could have a four-way tie for first. It's going to get pretty wild at the top of the standings. But what it came down to, you know, was the tie-breaking scenario. And we'll go ahead and share a little bit here. Washington gets second place and gets to go to the title game. Why? Because we had the Huskies beating both Utah and Oregon. Washington's going to be really good this year, guys. We know that. Michael Penix returns. His top five pass catches return. The defense was good last year. People just didn't realize it. They're going to be even better this year. They get to host Utah. They get to host Oregon. We think they win both of those games. So Washington, with the tiebreaker over the Utes and the Ducks, gets to go to second place. They own the tiebreaker. They play USC. Utah is third. We have them beating Oregon, but losing to USC and losing to Washington. Therefore, because of that, they will be ahead of the Ducks, who, again, come in at 10 and 2, 7 and 2. Utah is going to be great. Cam Rising is coming back. The defense is going to be one of the best in the country. They have an opportunity to contend for a third straight Pac 12 championship. Oregon is going to be elite as well. Bo Nix returning. Great offense. Defense should be improving with eight starters back. But the schedule is just really, really tough. They have to go to Washington. They've got to go to Utah. They've got a trap game in week two at Texas Tech. They have to host USC. So some would say 10-2 and two might even be generous for the Ducks, although I still have a lot of faith in this team. And I think they're going to live up to their expectations. Wouldn't be surprised to see them in that Pac-12 title, but I think they fall just short. So... Really, really wild stuff with those first four teams of the Pac-12, guys. And that's what we said earlier in the video. It's a fun conference. So much talent across the board. So many intriguing storylines. This is the deepest the Pac-12 has been in years. It's going to be the most competitive that it's been in years. And they may finally get themselves a college football playoff representative. They might finally get them in there after a very, very long drought. 
Oregon State coming at number five, nine and three, six and three. This team earned their third ever, third ever 10 win season in program history just last year. We had them with a chance to win another 10 games, nine and three in the regular season. If they win their solid bowl game, they would get another 10 win season. Jonathan Smith is building something there. Quarterback upgrade with DJ Uyungo Lay. Running back room is deep with Damian Martinez and Deshaun Fenwick. I really like the defense too. I think they'll have a couple of growing pains early after losing so many key starters from last year. I, mean, I do believe the Beavers will continue to get better as the year goes on. A couple opportunities to pull off an upset or two, and if they do that, again, that muddles up that conference championship race. We said if you want a dark horse in the Pac-12, Oregon State is that team. Do not sleep on the Beavers. UCLA coming in below them, 8-4, and 5-4 and four in conference play. Some would view that as a disappointment. I don't know if I'd go that far, though. They lose their star quarterback, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, who had really been with Chip Kelly from the beginning since he arrived in L.A. They lose Zach Charbonnet, one of the better running backs in the conference. They lose their top two receivers from last year. So you lose a lot of offense. And UCLA, that's been their strength the last few years. It is the offense. Chip Kelly, he's an offensive-minded guy. I have a lot of faith in Dante Moore, assuming he gets the nod at freshman quarterback in L.A. I think he'll do just fine. I really think UCLA's offense is going to be solid. I think the defense is going to be solid with nine starters back on that side of the ball. But they do face a tough schedule, of course. They play at Utah, at Oregon State, at Arizona, at USC. It's, it's pretty tough. It's a tough go-around. Then the home schedule is, is relatively favorable. But, you know, wouldn't be surprised if they slipped up one there either. But I, I, I like this USC team, or UCLA team a lot. I think they could get to 9-3. and three. Wouldn't shock me to match last year's win total. But right now... We had the Bruins at 8-4, and four, which would be their third straight year with at least eight wins. Chip Kelly continuing to build something in L.A. Washington State below them. That's kind of where the drop-off is. If you're looking for legitimate Pac-12 title contenders, it ends with UCLA. So it's half the conference. Those top six teams, we believe, all could contend for a Pac-12 title. The last six, probably not so much. The Cougars come in at 6-6, six and six, the last team in our standings that will go bowling out of the Pac-12. So seven of the 12 teams going bowling this year in our eyes. The Cougars 6-6, six 4-5 and six, four and five in conference play. Jack Dicker doing a phenomenal job in Pullman. This is only going to be his second full year with the team, so you've got to give him a little bit of a grace period. But this would be the third straight bowl for the Cougars after navigating through that interim period in 2021, getting them to 7-5 and five in the regular season last year, now 6-6 six and six this year. I love Cam Ward. I love Nakia Watson. I like the defense a lot too, but again, a kind of like Oregon State will go through some growing pains early in the year, and that could prevent them from getting off to a much stronger start. So Washington State, still a bowl team, no doubt in my eyes, but I don't think they can improve on last year's total. After that, Everybody else fails to make a bowl game. California is at five and seven. This would be California's third five and seven season in seven years under Justin Wilcox. They have 17 starters coming back. You want to believe that Cal can get there. I want to believe that Cal can get there, but I'm worried about their offense. California has never averaged more than 28 points per game in the seven years under Justin Wilcox. I don't know if that can change this year. And they're going to need offense to compete against some of these better offenses that they're going to face. They're going to need to hang with teams like USC, like Oregon, like UCLA, like Utah. I mean, it's a tough stretch for California. And they have a four-game stretch in the middle of their season where they play Oregon State, Utah, USC, and Oregon. Four straight games against four of the top teams in the conference. It's not going to bode well for the Golden Bears. They're one upset away from clinching bowl eligibility, which could save Justin Wilcox's job. But I just don't think it's going to happen. Arizona in at 5-7, and seven, kind of the same story with California. The talent is there to go bowling. I have faith in Jed Fish. I have faith in Jaden Delora, an offense that averaged 318 passing yards per game last year. The offense is phenomenal, especially with eight starters coming back. The defense is their Achilles heel. They gave up over 200 rushing yards per game last year, well over 250 passing yards per game. I just don't know if the Wildcats' defense can get the stops they need against some of the better offenses they're going to face, including the likes of USC and Utah and UCLA, but also a past-heavy Mississippi State team in the non-conference. So Arizona, one upset went away from making a bowl game. I wouldn't be surprised to see them get there. This is the best team Jed Fish has had since he arrived in Tucson. But I think they're just a year away, maybe, from getting to that point. Arizona State. New coach in Kenny Dillingham. The final three teams here, guys, you know, are dealing with new coaches. And, that, and that's you know, not a surprise to see them in the bottom of the, of the standings. New coaches are going to go through growing pains. And these three teams, 
aren't just getting new coaches with a lot of talent. It is a major rebuild. Arizona State left in the midst of that dumpster fire left behind from Herm Edwards. Not much talent there. The offense might surprise a little bit. The defense in the secondary is really, really good, but I'm not sure Kenny Dillingham can work a miracle and get the Sun Devils to a bowl game. That would require them to probably start four and two or five and one in that first part of the season because in the back half, those final six games, they play Washington, Utah, UCLA, and Oregon. Four of those final six games against some of the better teams in the top half of the conference. So I just don't think Kenny Dillingham can get there, but I do think he's the right man for the job. Colorado and Deion Sanders, it's been the talk of the offseason, right? We've got him at three and nine, just two and seven in conference play. I just don't think it's going to pan out for Deion Sanders in year one. This is a Colorado team that went 1-11 last year, was historically bad defensively, giving up over 500 yards per game. Yes, he's brought in a lot of transfers, including his son, Shadur Sanders, at quarterback. Maybe it pans out for him in year one. I just don't think so. You're not going to see a drastic, drastic turnaround after such a historically bad 2022 campaign, especially with a bunch of players that, yes, have Power 5 playing experience, but have never played together. I also worry about Colorado in the trenches, not a whole lot of weight and size up front, both on the offensive line and the defensive line. Back to that end with a tough schedule, including two games at TCU and a home game against Nebraska in the first two weeks of the season, then playing Oregon, USC, UCLA, Oregon State, and Utah. Colorado's just not there yet. They'll be much more competitive. They'll triple, triple their win total, but they're not going to get to a bowl game by any means. And then Stanford. Definitely the worst team in the Pac-12 this year. Only six starters coming back this year. Dealing with a new coach in Troy Taylor coming in from Sacramento State. You know, the Cardinals are dealing with a quarterback battle between two uh, players that combined for just 31 collegiate passing attempts. So the offense wasn't all that great last year with a decent quarterback in Tanner McKee. You can only matter, uh, imagine how bad it's going to be this year with an inexperienced quarterback and only three starters back as a whole offensively. It would not shock me at all to see Stanford go 0-12. I think their ceiling is 2-10, maybe 3-9 and nine if they're lucky, but we have them at 1-11, winless in conference play. Again, the Pac-12 simply is too deep. Even the teams that we don't have going bowling, like California, Arizona, Arizona State, have a lot more talent than Stanford and could shape out how the Pac-12 you know, ends in 2023. We saw that a handful of times last year. Arizona upsetting UCLA played a major role. Arizona State upsetting Washington last year, played a major role. So these teams might not be going bowling, but they will have a say on who wins the conference and who makes that championship game. But Stanford, we don't think it's going to have too much of a say. 1-11 in year one under Troy Taylor. As we mentioned, we've got USC versus Washington in the Pac-12 championship game. Very similar setup to last year. USC wins this game. They go to the college football playoff. Their only loss coming to, well, go check that out in that video. But only loss would be in conference play, but they win the Pac-12 as a one-loss team. They are going to the college football playoff. Washington, they could beat USC. They're not going to the college football playoff, but they'll earn a major New Year's Six Bowl berth. Very similar to what happened last year. USC, had they defeated Utah, would have gone to the playoff. Utah, they beat USC, but they were there was no way they were going to the playoff. They just got the opportunity to go to the Rose Bowl for the second year in a row, which was fantastic. So what's going to happen in this game? Will USC fall short one more time, or will Lincoln Riley get the Trojans to the college football playoff? That's what we think happens. We think USC will win the Pac-12 and will go to the college football playoff. This USC team, guys, is unbelievable. Offensively, they are legit. Defensively, they might struggle per usual, but I think they're going to be a little bit better than they were last year, and that's really all they need. They need just a little bit of defensive improvement. They play Washington early in the year. Maybe they lose to them, maybe they don't. But regardless, we do think they beat them in the Pac-12 championship game. It's going to be an absolutely insane game. A lot of fireworks. Caleb Williams versus Michael Penix. Lots of points. A lot of passing yards. Both teams fighting for everything on the line here. But USC gets their revenge. USC finds a way to redeem themselves from losing in last year's Pac-12 championship game. And Lincoln Riley, like he did for so many years at Oklahoma, will have the Trojans in the college football playoff in just his second year in Southern Cal. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. That's two conferences down, three more Power 5 conferences to go. We'll begin our next set of predictions on Thursday. Take one day break, get our next set of conferences going. Can't wait to see who it's going to be. We're ready to show it for you guys. But until then, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Leave your comments and thoughts on the Pac-12 predictions down in the description below. Season's going to be here before we know it. And these predictions will mean nothing by then. 
It's all going to be decided out on the field. But as always, make sure to check out everything down in the description too. Our expert picks over on the gridironexpert.com, our Patreon account for exclusive college football content, our mailing address to send us some gear, send us some Pac-12 representation. We don't just need it for prediction season. We need it for the actual season as well. So send it out to us to that mailing address below to be represented in every single GE video. As we expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,